Okay, so now we're gonna do the safety operation for the vertical milling machine, okay? What's rule number one? Keep hands clear of moving parts. Keep hands clear of moving parts. So where's the moving parts on the mill? Once again, it's this area right here. And at, as always, it has a guard to bring in front of it. So when you're operating it, you should be standing over here anyways. So this should keep a barrier between you and the cutter. You can see how the cutter's spinning right now. Just make sure you keep your hands clear of it. That's the only moving part that we have. Okay, rule number two. Always be sure workpiece is clamped securely. Okay, so we have our workpiece here. We're gonna put it in the vise. Once again, the vise, in case you don't know, the vise is a common word you're gonna hear. The vise or the chuck is what holds your workpiece. So as you put this in the vise, you're gonna make sure you turn it down and once again, you gotta give it a good crank. We're not just nilly-willying on these things. There's a lot of pressure put on our workpiece by the cutter, so we have to make sure that we have it tightened down very good, and we're gonna check it with the budge test. Okay? Rule number three. Always be sure cutter is secure. So, like all machines, we haven't really talked about the cutter being secure yet, because most machines, the cutter's on. We should have talked about it maybe on the lathe as well, but for the saw and the belt sander and the drill press, we talked about making sure your drill was clamped down securely with the chuck key. These cutters are interchangeable. We can take many different cutters and take them in and out. We have a fly cutter here, we have a drill chuck here. When we take the cutters in and out, we're gonna go up here on the top and we're gonna take the cutter in and out with a wrench that goes up on here. It's okay if you don't get a perfect film on that, Ryan, as long as we got, they know it's here. So as you're going in and out and you're taking the cutters in and out, you have to make sure the cutter is secure in here. The way that you'll know that the cutter isn't secure is it'll make a rattling noise uh, and also it just will not sound or look right. So just be sure that the cutters are secure when you take them in and out. Rule number four. Always be sure to remove three quarter inch wrench from draw, draw bar. Okay, so this cutter gets attached with some threads in the end. It goes up inside here like this and there's threads that come down from a bar that runs all the way through the machine. It's called the draw bar. And up here on the top is how you remove and take the tools in and out. So as you're gonna be moving the tools in and out, when you're done taking the tool out, this is the same almost as the chuck key. Never take your hand off this, because if you turn the machine on, it's gonna spin around, smash up against there, strip the threads out of the cutter, or even worse, the cutter will shoot out of the machine. So make sure when you're done, you take the wrench off of the draw bar. Rule number five. Always draw the machine to ensure it is running clockwise. So you'll notice on the machine I've drawn a little arrow on here. This is the way the cutter's supposed to be spinning. You guys are more than welcome to draw this arrow on here if over the years it gets erased off of there or whatever. You're more than welcome to. And up here you'll notice I've drawn a little black dot on here. And for most machines I've put some kind of an indicator so you know it's running clockwise. But if you turn this on, it's running counterclockwise. You can't tell what direction that's running right now. It's going too fast. So, what you need to do is you need to jog it. If you come in on this right here, you jog it like this, and you can see it's running the right way. So then you know you've turned it on the right way. I guarantee somebody in your class this year is gonna run it backwards, and you're gonna shoot all the teeth out of it, therefore costing the shop about 60 bucks. Don't be that person. Make sure you always jog the machine to make sure it's running in the proper direction. Rule number seven. Always ensure the vise is clean before mounting your workpiece. So you guys know we've talked by now about um, you know, how accurate the machine shop is. If you have a small chip, let's see if I can get one here. Right here's one. If you see this on my finger, that chip there will throw your your all of your measurements out extraordinarily. So as you go to mount something in the vise, what I highly recommend is you take your hand and you wipe the vise out like this to get all the small chips. That's why it's handy if you wear one of my shop aprons because then if you have chips on your hand, you can just wipe it off on your apron. And you're more than likely gonna be using what these are called parallels. We're gonna wipe those off too before we put those in there. Okay, so we've got the parallels and the vise wiped out. What's the last thing, Arthur, that we should wipe out before we put it in the machine? Our workpiece. So you take your workpiece, 
You should wipe that off as well. And everything that you put in there is nice and clean, giving you an accurate setup and a safe setup. Rule number seven. seven? Always move the table to the far right or left while setting up or adjusting your work. So you can see right here the cutters right above my work. So as I'm, the last demonstration I did, I shouldn't have been doing that because the cutters right here. Even though it's off, it's still sharp. So as you go to do any adjustments, just crank the table to the back left. You don't need to go all the way down to here, but as soon as this is out of the way, now you can see you can do all your adjustments in a nice clean area. Rule number eight. Always machine the largest face first when machining a block. So when you're gonna machine a block, you should always machine or cut or manufacture, whatever you wanna use the word, we like to use the word machining. So when we're gonna machine our workpiece, you wanna machine the largest face first. On this block here, there is no large face. These are all the same sides. So it doesn't matter which side you begin with on this. Obviously these are smaller. But if you had a block of steel that was like this right here, you would wanna start with this face or this face first. That ensures you're gonna have a nice, clean, flat, large face to start with. So that's what you wanna do when you're gonna machine up a block or square up a block. Largest face first. Rule number nine. Always use a brush to remove chips, not your hands. <whistles> Rule number 10. Always be sure quill is in upright lock position before you begin machining. Okay, so the quill, another new word for most people. Okay, uh, the quill is this right here. When I move this down, the quill moves up and down. You can see this here, this is the quill. So if you see this moves up and down like this, Jake, what do you think the, the mill can be used for other than machining? Like if I can... Uh, like a drill? Yeah, so you can drill with the machine as well, right? So this is for drilling. But if I'm gonna machine with a cutter like this, and this is loose, and I go to machine, it's gonna suck right down into the workpiece. So what it has is a lock right here. You can lock it, but still watch. I can still move it down. So what you need to do is you need to make sure if you're doing machining, not drilling, but any kind of machining, that the quill is in the upright, all the way up there like this, locked position. Now this thing is sturdy and it can't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the key things when you're gonna do any kind of machining is your setup. If your setup is solid and rigid, then you're not gonna have many problems. If you have a kind of a loose setup, and things are loose and movable, you're gonna have a problem. So any, the more rigid and sturdy your setup can be, the better off you are. So always make sure the quill is in the upright, locked position. Rule number 11. Do not attempt to mount, measure, or adjust your, your work while in the middle spinning. So same as the last however many machines this has been a rule on, you're not gonna be doing any kind of adjustments to your work while it's spinning. Shut it off, do all your adjustments, your measurements, I've seen a lot of people that over the years, they're machining their workpiece, they get the cutter over there, it's still spinning, okay, right? And they're taking a mic measurement right here. I know I'm far away from that, but I don't care. I want you to shut it off, then take all your measurements with your micrometer or your caliper at that time. Rule number 12. Always use guards. Okay, there's the guard, bring it into place. Make sure you're using it. I think this leads into the next rule, number 13, which is... Always be aware of the direction chips are flying while machining. Okay, so honestly, these chips are gonna fly all over the machine shop as you're cutting. They're gonna be flying all the way over, maybe hitting somebody on the lathe. So you need to make sure that you're in, aware of the direction they're flying. At that point in time, you can adjust the guard accordingly to stop the chips from flying and hitting your classmates. Classmates, let people know if hot chips are hitting you. Like if a chip's hitting you in the leg, you need to say, hey, buddy running the late or running the mill, the chips are hitting you over here. And then they'll adjust wherever the chips are flying. They're very hot, they're very dangerous. Make sure you know where they're flying. The guard will help keep that in check. And the last rule for the milling machine is? Never climb mill. Never climb mill. Now that doesn't mean this, okay? That never climb mill doesn't mean this. 
Oh, my name's Curious George. My name's Curious George. I'm gonna climb up on the mill. Yeah, look at me climbing on the mill. That's not what that means, okay? Climb milling, <laughs> climb milling is a dangerous form of milling. We're gonna watch a video on it later on. It's, it's too hard to explain right now during our safety operations, but we'll watch a video on climb milling later on. Do not climb mill. There's two different things, climb milling and conventional milling. You're gonna use conventional milling, not climb milling. Does anybody have any questions on the vertical milling machine?